trust acquires the property, we try to responsibly manage it for many different areas. Responsible farming, and we'll talk about stream restoration in a little bit. But what we've done here is a shortleaf pine restoration effort. So a lot in the late 1800s, early 1900s, in this area, a lot of the shortleaf pine were cut and timbered um, and taken away. And they're pretty slow growing. And, they've, and they're now pretty rare is maybe a strong word, but they're not that common in the Southern Appalachians, shortleaf pine. So here, before we got the property in 2010, this area was logged. And so we started noticing when we got the property that shortleaf pine were coming up. Mm. And so, and also loblolly pine and other competitors were coming up as well that are much faster <laughs> growing. So what we've done is try to give the shortleaf pine room to grow and encourage their growth. Um, working with uh, the county extension has been really helpful in figuring this out as well. Um, and so shortleaf pine also offer a lot of good habitat for like cottontail, meadowlarks, uh, just a, a great like early <laughs> successional habitat that happens when they start to grow. <laughs> Um, so we, this is our restoration site, and we planted a lot of them as well as just tried to let the natural ones grow. So. How long would it take for a shortleaf pine to reach, I guess, maturity for lumber? Or for yeah, that is a great question, and I don't know that timeline officially. Uh, Jay, do you know it at all? I really don't. It's a, yeah. you know, it, it is a shorter, lower growing, denser grain pine than the really fast growing wobbly pines and loblollies, things like that. So it's, um, it's more prized in a way because once you've lost it, here we are 110 yeah. years later realizing that we have this species underrepresented in our landscape. So this is a unique opportunity that sort of sprang up on its own, presented itself to us, and we're trying to trying to take advantage of it. The Natural Heritage Program in North Carolina is one of the best natural heritage programs in the eastern United States for cataloging plants and plant community types. And so we have lists of how much protected land in the state supports what species. So we kind of know if we find a species like shortleaf that is underrepresented or overrepresented, and then we can build partnerships around um, increasing that that type of habitat. So it's a it's a cool opportunity um, to take something that was badly degraded by overgrazing yeah. and turning it into that number is getting ready to go up for the state of North Carolina. Um, shortly, pine on protected land that that number is going to going to change, which is exciting. Which one? You, there were tiny seedlings down on the way up, <laughs> and um, I think most of these in here, we tried to clear out They're some all, of the competitors. Yeah. Oh, so this is short leaf that, that you're looking at. So the, the bigger the ones. ones too? Just a bigger. That's not a loblolly, so I'm guessing it's a yeah, short leaf. All the, all the taller ones are the ones that were naturally here, that we kind of cleared out around to let, mm -hmm. allow them to grow, and then mm -hmm. the shorter ones are the ones that were planted, I believe. Um, this, this plant will also grow in really rocky, poor oh. soils, um, so it's, it's a unique niche um, survivor. Yeah. I mean, generally what I see coming back in these areas, a lot of areas, is you know the yellow poplar naturally by itself. Is there a, a benefit of this plant over that for the soil? Or, um, I mean, are you just because the loblolly pine or, or the short Leaf a lot of pine times is we're rare. The whole matrix of yeah. benefits that a species brings. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So, if you think about the um, eastern coast, longleaf pine being a species that was largely eradicated because it makes great ship masts, we didn't really know what we lost, and we lost 80% of the longleaf pine forest. And what we lost was all the understory species as well. So, what we're learning a lot about, I think, is the benefits of a different type of canopy and having a sort of a quilt of all these different types of forests um, in protected landscapes. Mm -hmm. If you just had, you know, the 500,000 acres in Great Smoky Mountains and it was all northern hardwood forest, that would be okay, but it's a much more biodiverse place because you have laurel slicks, you have rhododendron hills, you have heath falls, you have rocky outcrops. Mm -hmm. And so when we take a 100-acre piece of property, a 100-acre piece of property like this, and we can have these different uses where different species will persist, even if there's healthy lower elevation poplar forest here, since we don't have a lot of this pine, we're going to learn what species thrive in conjunction with this briary 
landscape, mm -hmm. a lot of those mammals, small mammals, yeah. that need cover Love from it. predators and raptors, mm -hmm. you would not find those um, in an interior core forest of, of yellow poplar. Right. And so I think we need to look at representative patches of all those different forest mm -hmm. types. And this, this is different for us. It's not yeah. one we've got on other yeah. lands that we've protected. And the opportunity kind of just showed itself. So we took that as an indication that <laughs> this is a pretty good site for this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Okay. <coughs> cool. We'll keep on trucking. Yeah.